All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. Uh, in this one, we're going to be going over how you can market your local or small business in 2020, what the tips I have for you are in this upcoming year. And these are really things that nobody else is gonna tell you. Other people might let you know about some new shiny object or one thing that you can do so that you might be able to get one or two extra customers. But these things are built on the long term, and they're principles that don't really change. So I know that they can help you. And if you stick around until the end, I know it's gonna be really valuable for you. Just a tiny bit about me. My name's Keaton Walker. I run a digital marketing agency and I help small businesses, specifically orthodontists. And I have a couple other clients here and there that are other small local businesses. And I help them get new customers through Facebook and Instagram. Here's some proof of what I do, different messages and conversations that have come through Facebook to our clients. So let me ask you a question. What would it be like if you could get 5, 10, 20 people who are interested in your service messaging you every single day. What difference would that make in your business in 2020? That's what I'm going to go over in this video, and I know you'll get a ton of value out of it. If you do, please leave a like on this channel and subscribe. I release a lot of awesome content that I know can help you grow your business in 2020. I'm a small business owner myself, so I know your struggles, and I'm excited to have you here on the channel. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the video. The first tip I have for you, and this is, encompasses everything else I'm going to tell you in the video today, and that's to understand human nature. A mentor of mine once told me that business is simply the study of human nature, and marketing is the study of human nature at scale. If you understand what causes humans to do what they do, then you're never gonna go hungry. You'll be able to provide a product or service for them that meets their needs or their wants and that they'll pay money for. I know that might sound a little bit vague, but I'll show you more later in this video exactly how you can implement this into your marketing. Okay, so number one was understand human nature, but that's more like a foundational principle that all of these other things are going to build on. So the real number one is to put a sign up. So if you're a local business, you have a brick and mortar location where people come to visit you, or maybe you're a real estate agent or some sort of agent where people locally in the area might trust you, but especially if you're a brick and mortar business, what you should do is have a sign on a major road so that people can see you. I'm not talking about a billboard that you have to pay $5,000 a month for. I'm just talking about a business sign out in front of your location. More than anything else, this is what's going to boost sales in your local area and boost awareness. Everybody's gonna know about you simply because of that sign. So if you don't have a sign up already, invest the money into getting a sign. It really, really helps. In my experience in working with the companies that I have, no amount of crazy digital marketing can beat in the long term, just a sign up in your local area. This sign thing brings me to my next point because what a sign is is really just a piece of content that you're putting in front of an audience. And depending on what your product is, that audience resonates with that sign and then they become customers or they become a lead and then years or months down the road they become a customer, right? And at the end of the day, that's all that marketing is. You just need more content in front of more of the right people. So what a sign does, because you're a local business, it puts it in front of the right people who are the people in your local area. So the second tip I'm going to give you is to understand content and audience. When you understand that all you need to do is put the right content in front of the right audience, your marketing becomes a lot more simple. You can understand which platforms to market on and which content you need to put in front of them. So for example, let's say that you run a local sewing company and you know that the majority of your customers are moms between the ages of 25 and 55 that are too busy to do their own sewing. First of all, that tells you where you should be advertising. You should be on Facebook and Instagram and also have a local sign up in your area because moms between those ages are on Facebook and Instagram. So figure out where they congregate, where it is that, that you can put the right kind of content in front of them. Then your job becomes a lot simpler and you just need to understand what kind of content you need to create. In this case, you would wanna create something that resonates with a mom. And the way that you can do that is by surveying them and kind of understanding the DNA, so to speak, of your current customer and therefore your future customer. Who are they? How do they operate? And what is it that they want to hear and understand? And when you do this research, creating content becomes a lot easier. My third tip for you is to understand the difference between paid and organic traffic. These two types of traffic are crucial to understand. And when most people get started online marketing their businesses, they don't understand the difference. So let me give you an example. Let's say you just started a cleaning company in your local area and you have about 30 people that like your Facebook page and they're all friends and family. If you post something on your Facebook page, the only people that are going to see it are your friends and family, unless they share it, which you'd have to ask them to do. 
that's organic traffic. But paid traffic is when you pay Facebook, you pay Instagram, or you pay Google to put your business in front of your target market. And that's a lot faster. It's also cost effective if you can make it profitable and you don't have to nag your friends and family to share your posts. If you want to learn more about how to run paid Facebook ads, the psychology and the mindset behind it, and what you need to do to have profitable campaigns, go ahead and check out this video that I'm going to link to up here. So paid versus organic traffic is a key distinction that you must understand if you're trying to reach new people. If you just wanna reach the same people that like your pages or follow you on Instagram or Facebook, then you just need to post. But if you wanna reach people outside of that realm, you need to pay. Or you need to go to a Facebook group and post about your business. In my experience, Facebook groups are an awesome way to market your business, but you need to find the right one that has a healthy culture of people participating in the group, talking to one another, contains the people in your target market, as well as allowing you to post something about your business in there. Facebook groups are a great way to get started just posting about your business and getting some exposure, but they're not as reliable in the long run as just running your own paid ads. The fourth thing you need to understand is the marketing funnel. This is a basic marketing concept that most of you have probably heard about before. The marketing funnel refers to the idea that marketing is a lot like putting something down a funnel. At the very, very top, you can fit a lot, but at the bottom, you can't. And it's not because you can't fit a lot of people in the bottom of your marketing, you'd love to, but it's because people just drop off naturally throughout the customer journey. So at the very top of the marketing funnel, there's an awareness stage. There are more people aware of you than people who are considering buying from you. There are more people considering than who have actually purchased from you. So these three steps of the marketing funnel allow you to understand how you should structure your campaigns because you need to speak to people who are aware of you or or who aren't even aware of you, who aren't in your funnel yet, people who are aware of you but haven't purchased yet, and people who have purchased and who you might wanna make repeat customers. So let me give you an example of how you might do this. One trend that's come out recently is escape rooms, right? Let's say you run an escape room company and you're wanting to get more people coming in, more people participating in your escape room. So one way to take the marketing funnel into account is to understand that not everybody knows what an escape room is, not everybody knows why it would be fun, and not everybody knows who you are and why they should trust you. So the people outside of your funnel, you need to talk to them first so they can become aware of you. A great way to do this would be creating a video, explaining your company, seeing how much fun people have while they're in your escape room, and helping them understand that they can bring their whole family or they can bring a date, or it's an awesome opportunity to bring friends together for a fun time, and then paying Facebook to show that video to people in your area who fit your target demographic, which might be men and women from the ages of 20 to 35 are the most likely to participate. If you can get that to show up on their Facebook and Instagram feed, then they'll become aware of you and start to trust you. And when you try to sell them something later or they see you again, they'll be more likely to purchase. Another example, if you don't have any kind of brick and mortar location that people are coming into, is to create free value online so that people can engage with your brand, understand who you are, and start to know, like, and trust you. When people find your free guide or your free video and you put it in front of them in the right way, maybe through a Facebook group or by posting it on YouTube like I am, you can follow up with them down the line by asking for their email or their phone and start a conversation with them so that they become the customer that you ultimately want. I can't stress this enough, creating a proper marketing funnel and understanding that there's a customer journey that a lot of people need to warm up and that you need to understand the human condition. They don't trust you yet. And so if you can get them to trust you and then slowly warm them up to the point where they're ready to purchase, that's when you're going to create successful marketing campaigns. So the fifth and final tip that I have for you isn't very technical. And I don't think any of these have been because I wanted to give you something that would be timeless and that covers the basis of marketing, the things that really just aren't going to change. What number five is, is to build relationships. I have conducted sort of an informal survey with business owners all over the country asking them what their biggest marketing headache is. I'd like to read you this survey response. Uh, she said, from my past office position, I was not only a treatment coordinator, but marketing fell on me as well. I handed budgeting and monthly marketing efforts, not only within the dental community, but also local schools and events. We found that no matter how much money was put into each office, the most valuable turnaround was building relationships. This is a crucial point that almost nobody talks about when it comes to marketing or creating a successful business. Think of growing your business kind of like the merry-go-round at the park where you grew up. 
at first when you start pushing the big metal circle, it goes slowly. And then you start going a little bit faster and then a little bit faster and then a little bit faster until you can jump on yourself and have fun while the merry-go-round keeps turning. This is a concept that comes from an awesome book called Good to Great by Jim Collins. Totally recommend this book, by the way. He refers to the merry-go-round as the flywheel. And when you start pushing it, it's very, very slow. Turn by turn by turn, your marketing, your business, your systems start to develop. And what a lot of people do is when they don't see an immediate return on investment, then they start going another way. They turn the flywheel a different way. And then they do it another way. And then they do it another way. And they, never, they wonder why they never make progress. And it's simply because they didn't go long enough in a single direction. And when you build relationships, this is what you create. You create a self-sustaining business that will pay dividends years and years down the line. If I were you, I really would not waste your time on local marketing events. I think they're usually too expensive and you will never really see a good return on investment from it in terms of money. So to illustrate this point, I'll give a classic example. A lot of my clients are asked by local schools to sponsor t-shirts or some sort of fundraising event. And for that sponsorship, they get their logo on the back of a t-shirt. That's great. The logo on the back of the t-shirt is going to allow other people to see your brand more, they'll recognize you, and business will go up. But I would encourage you, instead of focusing on getting the biggest logo on the t-shirt, I would encourage you to make the best connection with the person at that school. Because most likely they're the PTA president, or they have influence in another way, and they'll start referring friends to you. So there's a million different ways to do this, but at the end of the day, this is something I can't really coach you on personally, because I don't live where you live. And I don't understand the market the way that you understand it. And I don't understand who has connections and you do. So if you can take those people that have connections, engage with them in a genuine way, just because you care about them and don't expect anything in return. Just let them know that you're a good person, that you run a reputable business. I promise you that those relationships, those conversations, all of that is going to turn into increased revenue down the line. It's just simply the way it works. So there you have it. Those are my five tips for marketing in 2020 and in 2021 and in 2022. These things really aren't going to change in the next few years and some of them aren't gonna change ever. So make sure that you understand the base principles before you go chasing shiny objects and get yourself in debt or lose a lot of money in marketing. I would love to hear your thoughts on this video, something that you've seen be effective for your business. Please comment down below. Also, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video and if you got value out of it. It really helps support the channel and helps us get to more local business owners who need this kind of advice. So with that said, I'll see you next time. Make sure you check out these videos about Facebook ads and other ways that you can learn how to market your business in 2020. I'll catch you next time.